Hi, welcome at the session for Red Server creating a key value store. My name is Danny Wind, and in this session we'll create a Red Server package that implements a key value store. A key value store uses the HTTPS protocol or HTTP get put post and delete and rest architecture and JSON result and allows you to store arbitrary data in a key value server. Let's first create a key value store with file, new, and then color. On the red server, you'll find the red server package. We'll create a package with resources. Uh, that will add some uh, example data, making it easier for us to create the service. Put item, delete item, and finish. What you'll get is a couple of files. One of them is the data module. Let's save that as unit data main. And the data module actually contains the resource suffixes and the handlers. And then red key value server, which will be the name of our BPL package that will integrate into red server. If you look at the key value resource, just the data module, we'll see item between brackets. Item between brackets would mean the parameter. And what we want is a sub URL item. And then between brackets, the parameters, in this case, key or key and value for the update. An update would be the put item. For the delete, we'll just add item as a sub URL and then key. We also need some storage to put the key value items in. Uh, we're going to create a dictionary and the dictionary is in system generics collections. Dictionary is very fast and that's ideal storage for this type of application. Um, so we're going to create a global dictionary here and that global dictionary will be used by at each of the um, endpoints. Because it's a global dictionary, it's going to create a hotspot in our application because multiple clients are able to access the key value store at the same time. So we'll need to add some multi-threading support later on. And maybe you'd want to change that code with the key value store at some point in the future to allow for multi-threaded access without locking. Uh, we'll add the locking later. So this is the key value store. Let's put some items in there uh, or at least one so we can get some result back using the get. The get and the get item are two different things. The get will get you the entire dictionary, the entire set of keys. So let's create a JSON array and fill that JSON array with the items from the dictionary. Create it and then parse the keys. So there's a key here parse the keys from the key value store and put them in the JSON array. The uh, key value store, because it's uh, transient storage, it's in memory, uh, will be deleted every time the uh, Isapi DLL or Apache module is unloaded or when you stop red server in development mode. If you were to use uh, the Isapi configuration and allow for a 24 hour delay in actually deleting or removing the Isapi from memory, you'd have a key value store that would remain in memory for 24 hours. And for our purpose, or most purposes that I've used this key value store for, it's that's fine. Okay, so let's test this and open the browser. It's just a URL that you have to type in. So you can go to key value and then it executes the get, which gets you the array of items, which in this case is just a single one, a zero. Okay, and let's stop the red key value server. The red key value server is run within the red server and red server is pre-installed in, in Delphi in the IDE. So just running it will execute the EMS dev server. So let's put a marker there that I need to add some multi-thread support, otherwise I just forget later on. Okay, for the get item, let's add the key and then request the value. Remember that they were marked uh, with attributes. So you get the item slash key as parameter. Values returned in the body of the HTTP request. Uh, but the key is at the, uh, entered as a parameter. So we get that key as a parameter. We don't have to check for the validity or availability of key because if there's no key parameter, this uh, resource endpoint would not be called into by the red server. So it's automatically filtered. The key value store contains key. If it has the key for L key, then we return the value. And the value is just an item in the key value store. The key value store in dictionary, it holds strings, but you can just hold it, uh, fill it with arbitrary data. 
provided that you encode it as a string. So you could use base64 encoding to, for instance, put an image in the dictionary if you want to. So else begin end, and then a value would be empty. And we'd return that. Okay. Um, next up, we need to make sure that the response is actually returned. So if he found value, then we'd return it. And we are using the a response body dot set value. The a response actually holds more than just the value parameter for the body. We can return all types of data, everything that you'd imagine will be possible in a HTTP request response situation is available in a response. So do take a look at the internal coding of a response to get a handle on all the options that you have for returning data. So a response here, uh, one of the things that's also included is uh, exception raising and that exception raising actually uh, makes sure that you have the correct HTTP error code for a not found exception. In this case, we'll just add key not found with the key that we didn't find. And delete that, run it, and make sure that we uh, test this. Open browser, and then we'll go to the key value store. So instead of version, let's go to key value. And we're going to request an item. The first zero, because that's the one that's already there. And it works. And if an item that's not found, it actually returns HTTP error code with the not found exception. Next up, let's uh, not forget to create a locking uh, capability. So we're going to use a G lock of type T object. I'm going to use the built-in locking capabilities of the object to actually lock the key value store. We're using an external object, not using the key value store itself, um, because that's a better way of approaching this locking capability. So private procedure, uh, do global lock, and that do global lock procedure will use the G lock object to actually lock the uh, dictionary. And if there's any internal locking taking place in the dictionary itself, it won't be hindered by our external locking with glock. So if we were to replace the dictionary with some other uh, storage that has internal locking, we could still use this. So if the procedure is assigned and we enter a monitor on glock, or we're actually uh, locking the object now with a timeout of 500, for attempting to lock, get the lock, we can actually return and then do the procedure uh, that was called into do global lock. So do global lock will execute the procedure if it's assigned and if it acquires a lock. And finally, it will release the lock like that. And we can use this construct to uh, easily create locking around code that we need to be locked in our red key value server package. So we'll do with global lock, just put in an anonymous procedure in there, procedure begin end, and then place the code that you want to lock inside that procedure, like that. And so we have a nice pattern to actually implement locking in our red key value package. Let's Make sure that key L key is local here within the procedure. It doesn't need to be uh, outside of the scope. Okay. Let's also do that for the uh, get item. You may notice that we've implemented the get and the get item, but we haven't implemented the put and the uh, post and the other, the delete item. Um, they're actually in the completed source code. So no worries. If you download the completed source code, you'll have the entire red key value server and then you can use for your own uh, projects. So okay, let's embed test and okay, so that should work. Found value actually needs to be outside the anonymous procedure because we're using it outside the anonymous procedure. Okay, let's also not forget to create the, uh, the lock object, otherwise we'd get an exception. So that's the t object.create 
That's all you need to do here. It's just a dummy locking object. Let's run to make sure that it still works. It, the code actually hasn't changed other than now having uh, multi-user capabilities with multi-threaded uh, and thread safety with locking. So key value store item zero, it still yields zero. Okay, and the entire list is like that, it still works. Okay, you can download the uh, source code from Danny Wintonel Delphi Code Rich 2019.